Hi everybody, Alex Deploy here from Expert Forex and in today's video we're going to be looking at further aspects of how I became a millionaire by finding perfect indicator and robot settings. And this is number two in this series. In the first video uh, I listed these factors which we need to take into account when using indicators so we spoke mainly about the psychology and ownership of settings and how you need to be the boss over your forex trading robot or indicators and treat them as your servants. Now in this video, we're going to be looking at some of the other areas and I'm going to be mainly looking at sensitivity, but we're also going to be talking about whipsaw elements and also look at some creativity during this video. Now, if you haven't seen the previous video, here it is uh, and the link to it will be in the description and in the first comment of this particular video. But I suggest that have a look at this first video first before you move on to the second one. Now on your screen you can see a chart of the Aussie USD. I'm using the line chart format because uh, candles are not applicable in this particular discussion. Now the Aussie has had some really good trends. You can see there's a good strong trend there, strong trend upwards and then some, some medium trends and then a nice strong one there, strong one there and at the moment it's making a fairly nice strong trend. But at the same time it also has sideways, but at the same time it also has sideways price action. Now the purpose of Forex trading is to be able to divide the market into bullish market phases and bearish market phases. Bullish market phases are buying phases and bearish market phases are selling phases. So there's various ways we can do that but as the topic of this video indicates we are going to look at using indicators. So the, one of the first indicators that I'm going to put on is and discuss today is the moving average indicator. So I'm going to in, do that by inserting indicator. The moving average is a trending indicator and I'll put the moving average. Now at the moment as you can see one has come up with 100. I'm going to go with that. It's it's a, got a white color. Um, I'm going to just increase the size a little bit to, to over there and let's put that onto the chart. So the idea of the moving average really is to divide the market as I said earlier between buying phases and selling phases and here you can see there it's caught the buy the sell phase but it's also caught a bit of the buy phase so, uh, uh, there it's bought the buy phase beautifully but it's also caught part of the sell phase and there again it's caught the sell phase but it's also caught buy phases so using a moving average light of a hundred results in a number of things. It catches the phases we wanted to catch, but it also catches a lot of the phases we don't want it to catch. And this is where sensitivity comes in. We want to make this moving average more sensitive so that it catches 80% or 70% of, of a a particular phase and does not give away as you can see here if you were entering there you would be exiting there you would make very very uh, little profit if you were using the moving average as an entry method and an exit method so you want more sensitivity the other thing that you uh, will notice on these charts is that it goes through phases where the price is going over and under and over and under the moving average and that is what we call whipsaw phases because it's it's indicating a buy phase and then a, in a sell phase then a buy phase then a sell phase and that is what we call whip, whipsaw so if you make money going up you might lose a lot of money if you are in these whip for, whipsaw phases so that's another problem about indicators and the sensitivity of indicators the looser the indicator is the fewer whipsaws but at the same time you will end up giving away a lot 
when the phase of the market changes. So you'll catch the phase, but you'll give away a, a lot. You'll catch the phase, but you'll give away a lot. So the moving average has limitations as to how it can divide the market into a buy and sell phase. But let's go with this particular one. So we've got the 100 on there. So we're saying this is not sensitive enough. We want to ride the trend and get out very quickly and we want to ride that trend and get away. So let's go and look at using a slightly different setting. And we'll go here and we'll go to the a moving average and let's try um, and uh, 40 and I'm just using numbers off the top of my head and we'll give that a yellow phase and let's see if that is more sensitive. So here we go. So, so already we can see, uh, just looking at this particular area, that the yellow got us into the trend very early and kept us in the trend and got us out very quickly when the trend changed compared to the white one that got us in early but got us out too late and we gave up. So the yellow moving average looks like a better setting because it's getting us out earlier and also putting us into the next trend a lot earlier and at some stages it's still we're still giving back and and at some stages there could even be whipsaws so in this case you got in over there and there so the yellow has improved things a bit but has not solved our problem. In fact, this, the, the yellow has become a lot more sensitive, but also has resulted in a lot more whipsaws, as you can see over there and over here. There's a lot more whipsaws that have happened where it has gone from buy to sell to buy to sell a lot more than the white indicator there. Okay, so let's see. So that's a little bit still a little bit loose and let's go and have a look at another an, another setting so we go on like this and we say um uh, uh, trending moving average and let's go and try another setting and i'm going to go to the uh, 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 a much looser setting like for instance let's go to 12 and we'll give that a bright blue color and we'll say what does this one look like okay so now this one as you can see and we're talking about sensitivity and just while i'm talking about that i forgot to tell you about why these indicators are more sensitive than the others is that the period it uses to look back so in other words when we had a hundred in here it was looking back 100 candles or bars in this case uh, to calculate the value of this indicator now we are telling it don't look back 100 we may we saying look back 12 so that is where your sensitivity settings lie in most of your indicators in the period so this is obviously a lot more sensitive and the longer you make this the less sensitive it becomes so let's go have a look at what this blue suddenly looks like so there we go uh, uh, we see that it actually is very sensitive and and but it does in fact during during this phase it does in fact still result in a few more whipsaws you can see there's a, a whipsaw there but it does get you into a big trend v early and it gets you out of the trend when it changes nice and early look this one actually get, get gives you better signals there we go and up it goes so so it is really made some really nice signals and and this and yeah it's caught that trend pretty well but it has resulted in some whipsaws over here and over there and over there so so uh, but now you see it's a balance between whipsaws and sensitivity that is the constant balance that one has to have when deciding on which settings to use so how do we do this compromise 
between making good trading decisions based on the signals that these particular moving averages make. And one of the things I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take the yellow one out and just give you an, a few ideas of how we can filter out signals and making make them meaningful. So now we have a, a slow because this is the 100 moving average and this is a fast moving average. So we have the two of them there and w w uh, we now saying, oh my goodness, you know, there's look at those whipsaws there. It, it, the price came back. We, we we would have gone into a sell there. We may have gone into a sell over here. How can we avoid those whipsaws and, and still get quick exits? out of a change of trend because we don't want to exit over here we want to exit over there somewhere and when this trend changes we want to exit here not over there so in this this discussion i'm going to use the close of the candle philosophy to decide on whether the price has, has moved over the moving average or not in other words the price has to actually close on the other side of the moving average. If it closes below, it's a sell. If it closes above, it's a buy. Rather than, for instance, you see that 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 spike there, the price didn't close below the moving average, so that's not a valid a change of direction or change of phase. So uh, that's an important concept to bear in mind. So one of the filters that we like using and one that is used by the Make Money EA, for instance, is we say, OK, we will continue buying as long as these two moving averages are pointing in the right uh, same direction. So, for instance, here, the, this one's pointing up and this one's pointing up and therefore we will only take buy transactions while both indicators are pointing up and that will keep us out of whipsaws like could happen over there because we'd look there and we'd say oh no the indicator's still up we will buy if the indicator this like there there it's pointing down slightly you can see it's slightly down you you don't enter cells because this one is still pointing up it's only when both these these moving averages are in agreement that we will trade in a particular direction so a down it comes here and because this one's pointing up we actually don't take those trades it's only when there's an alignment. So there it starts, it's pointing up, there it's pointing up, and we then take the, the, the trade. Now, um, over there, it's still pointing down, so we don't take those trades, and so on. So that meth this method, as you can see, filters out a lot of whipsaws, but it also misses a lot of transactions. A lot of transactions get missed because, like there, this is pointing up, that is pointing down, and you miss this beautiful trend that's that's happened there. So the next question is, how can we get the best of both worlds, have a sense of transaction, and still um, get out early and get out, uh, get in early and get out late? So w another alternative, rather than using the direction of the, the uh, two moving averages, is to use the fast moving average and make a slight adjustment. So I'm going to actually delete this, the, 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 the 100 that we had, and I'm going to show you a trick on how you can cut out a lot of whipsaws when using the moving average. So what I'm going to do is I click on here, I go there, and now the trick is to use a shift. Now I'm going to use a shift of six. So in other words, what this will do, it will move the moving average six bars forward on your chart. And uh, it might be too much, but let's see what happens if I do that. Okay, now you can see how moving the, and maybe I should keep the old one there. So I'll 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 do that. Indicators, trend, moving average, and the previous one didn't have that offset. So I'm going to make it a smaller, and I'm going to actually just make it like that. 
and I'm going to make it like that. So, so, so there's the old one. You can see the old one is there. Same shape as the blue one, but the blue one has been pushed forward. So what has happened now is that it, it has escaped a lot of the whipsaws that the previous one had. And uh, it's, it is getting us into the trade very quickly and getting us out of the trade very quickly and into the next trade very quickly. So it's a, a, quite a good setting in that it gets you in and gets you out. You're not giving a lot back there as you move into these phases. And then when it, and here you can see there was a lot of whipsaws, a lot of whipsaws there, but the blue. Now, what I'm showing you is one of the methods that I use to determine indicator settings. And that is the old-fashioned visual method. In other words, I actually see, I actually look at the charts and evaluate the settings based on what I see in the chart. So, at, so just looking at this, we're saying either the offset is too much or too little. So let's go for four. Let's see what that does. Mm, yeah, that can work. That can work. The four, the four can get you in early and out, out a lot earlier. So you, what you do is you play around with the settings until you find ones. Now look at that beautiful trend out there. It would have taken you out there, but it would have got you back in into that particular trend quite nicely. And uh, then over here took you out of, got you into the trend, and it kept you in the trend for a very long time. So what you do is you sit like this with the charts, and you do it, you have to do it for every currency and every time frame, and you actually find the setting that will give you a good balance between sensitivity and whipsaws. Because whipsaws can really damage your results you, you can make a lot of money in a trend like that and then when you come to that kind of area you can start really losing money and what a lot of people then do is they they do use the guidance of longer term uh, um, moving averages uh, but there are other ways of getting out of that type of situation and that is often the time of day so in other words there are markets like the asian markets that are pretty sm pretty low volume and there are also times of day uh, between the u.s market and uh, let's say the uk market when there's only the asian markets open and there's also a period when no markets are open that the market will naturally go sideways so they would filter their signals out by saying i'm not going to take trades while the market's going sideways i'm only going to take the trades when the market is volatile in the opening of the uk and the opening of the us market so there's various ways you can filter your indicators but the main idea that I want to give you here is that firstly, you have to use your eye to see the settings that you want. This blue, for instance, we've pushed it to four. Maybe let's push it to eight and see if they give us better settings. Yes, and that does seem to uh, uh, provide uh, most probably fewer whipsaws. Uh, get you in a little bit later than you'd like to, but, but there are fewer whipsaws. So maybe that's the best balance between whipsaws and uh, sensitivity. So you've got to play around. And uh, a, a lot of people do this using optimization uh, for their robot. I like using the visual approach because you can see, I mean, look at this beautiful, th th those beautiful trends that it caught there and that beautiful trend that it caught there. Uh, you can also combine the offset, this particular offset method, with the longer term method two, uh, the, uh, by putting in a longer term moving average. So you can play around with these concepts that I've just shown you. Remember the con the concept was use a long term moving average and only trade it when both the short term and the long term moving averages are uh, pointing in the same direction, or use a short term moving average, which is offset, and that will get that will give you a good balance between catching the direction of the market but also avoiding many whipsaws.
And just a reminder that our best robots, like the Make Money EA, uses this principle to trade these fantastic trends. What it does, it, tr it actually will enter a deal in the direction of the trend, of the confirmed trend, as long as the trend is in place. So it will actually be entering deals all the time and cashing them in and opening new ones and cashing them in. And when the trend changes, it will go into like a hedging. It will have open sells and it will have open buyers which hedge each other and effectively give you the, that entry into the new phase. And, and, that, and when the entry into the new phase happens, it will buy with every single candle that is in the direction of the trend and only stop that when the uh, when the moving averages change direction but at that point there's a hedging that takes place because it will have op open buys and open sales and they'll hedge out so it's a very efficient EA that uh, uses these principles now, I hope I've given you lots of ideas on how these settings work. Uh, the period determines how many bars uh, uh, the indicator will look back. And uh, therefore, the longer the period, the smoother the indicator, but less sensitive. The shorter the period, the more up and down the indicator. And it is more sensitive, but it might create more whipsaws so use those principles and what i would suggest is that go and grab a few charts and do exactly what i've done right now play around with the moving average see how well you can fit those charts into uh, the moving average i'm just going to change the time frame here to um, i'm going to change it to daily and you can see on a on the daily basis what fantastic trends you could have caught using these moving averages. I mean, these are massive trends. I'll, I'll take it from there to there. That's a that's a almost a 900 pip trend. This this trend here, and I'm, I don't know where you'll get out. You must probably uh, will have. Got, it's also a 900 pip. So that's a 900 pip. That's a nine. So you can catch amazing trends. Years years one. Um, and you must probably would have got out there. Uh, that's a 220 pip trend. So it, 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 th th these offset moving averages are very powerful. But you have to sit and tune them into the time frame that you're trading as well as the currency that you're trading. Now, I will be doing this with a number of other indicators and with a few EAs to show you the importance of visually evaluating the settings that you're using when trading uh, indicators or forex robots. So watch out for my next video. From me, Alex Deploy, cheerio.